In today's episode, I'll show you how I turned this messy router table into organized awesomeness by building a proper cabinet and doing some tabletop upgrades. Let's do this! Boom! I've always wanted to build a decent router table cabinet under the cast iron top and I'm super pumped to be finally working on it. Besides making a drawer cabinet, I also want to upgrade the router lift, the fans and add proper disc collection. Rockler Woodworking Hardware is the sponsor of today's video. I'll be doing the upgrade using their excellent products. This will be a direct upgrade since my old router lift and fans were old Rockler models. The hole in my router tabletop only fits European sized plates, so I'll need to modify it to adapt to the American plate. I started by swapping my tabletop blade for an aluminium cutting blade so that I could remove 2mm off of the front and back edges of the router lift plate. I made sure to clamp the router lift very securely to the crosscut sled and wear face protection because these metal chips can hurt when they hit you on the face. It worked out perfectly, the cut was very smooth. The sides were too small for my cutout, so I cut a couple of skinny parentheses shapes out of black MDF. I refined the shapes until they had a snug fit. I moved into assembling the dust bucket from Rockler. Even if you don't build a cabinet around it, I would definitely recommend it to collect dust and avoid ending up in the messy situation that I show you at the beginning. It has a dual port to collect dust from the router lift area to the fence. These two flaps need to be screwed to the tabletop. Since my top is cast iron, I won't be drilling into it. I had to create a frame out of plywood to take advantage of the existing threaded holes. I built the frame quickly using pocket holes and did my best to attach it properly to the underside of the tabletop. It seemed easier to find the precise hole placement using a sheet of paper. I used two holes accessible from the top to create alignment points and then stuck the piece of paper upside down and hit the desired hole placement with a pencil. I could then go back to the plywood frame and mark those new holes ensuring the paper was aligned with the frame. I drilled all the way through and attached the frame with bolts to the underside of the top. Besides creating a means of connection to the dust bucket, this frame also created a lip inside the insert plate cutout. This is crucial to make leveling adjustments in the insert plate. I added a few scraps of plywood to come to a depth closer to the plate thickness. The next thing I did before jumping into the cabinet construction was to add a tiny extension to the edge of the cast iron top. I used 12mm grey MDF to build it.
It will make for a nicer finishing edge. Also, the table saw front rail is protruding and with this small extension everything will make more sense visually. It was easy to attach to the cast iron table with bolts using the existing holes. Because the whole router table extension will be resting over the new cabinet, I removed the original legs. I kept one clamp reversed on each side, supporting the top while the build was in progress. I didn't buy any wood for this project, I just used leftover material from old projects. I had a bunch of yellow MDF and some bits of birch plywood that I combined to bring the cabinet to life. To make things quick and easy, I assembled everything with pocket holes. On the left side of the cabinet, I cut a rectangle for the dust port and hoses. I clamped the sides and internal divider together and cut the rectangle in one shot. Once the carcass was complete, I could cut 9mm plywood into strips and make all the drawers. I made them all relatively shallow because the content that I'm storing is mostly router bits, wrenches and other small router accessories. The only deep drawer is for the handheld routers. The box itself doesn't need to be deep though. I made most of the cross cutting with my Rockler Precision Miter Gauge, which comes with a handy stop lock crucial for repetitive cuts. The plywood I used had one terrible face and one good face, so I left the worst looking areas facing the back or the front of the drawers since the false fronts would cover them up. I didn't use any special joinery here, I glued and nailed everything. All drawer bottoms were made of thin plywood scraps, which is more than enough for the weight that the drawers will carry. The only drawer with a thicker bottom was the one destined to store the routers.
The cabinet area where the dust port will be located will have the small router bit drawers installed and below them I will leave a rectangular cabinet space with no drawer. I wanted to add a toe kick to the cabinet with additional storage. These cutouts are meant to receive a couple of wood strips to ensure stability and parallelism between each divider. These little strips will also raise the drawer slides so that they don't rest on the floor. Each compartment was attached individually to the base of the cabinet and a central spacing was left open. It will receive a dust collection port. I will be installing a 4 inch hose coupler to that middle area, so I have to cut a large circle on the middle section of the toe kick. I didn't create enough vertical room for the coupler to fit, so I had to raise the cabinet Trace the coupler shape and then recess a pocket on the underside of the middle cabinet section. I can put it back together and install the coupler. With the main structure out of the way, I could start working on the cabinet front. I decided to try a different approach from my usual one and glue a bunch of scraps together to create panels. This way I could use wood that was basically trash. I never throw it away though. I still have too much scrap wood filling up my wood shelves and the floor, so I might plan another project soon to eliminate those. I made random combinations using even the thinnest strip of colored MDF and plywood. I felt good about using waste material and giving it a purpose other than using studio space without paying rent. The MDF boards are 1mm thicker than the plywood, so I flatten those areas with a hand plane and sander. I wanted to use as much stored material as possible. I installed these full extension drawer slides, even though they were too short for the drawer length. Clamps are not strong enough to hold the slides in place. Ugh. Ah, so I switched to regular F clamps. 
The only thing that I ended up purchasing were these small drawer slides. I could only find them in black, that's why I have black slides in some drawers and silver slides in others, but uh, it's okay, it's a shop project. The drawer boxes are installed. I can now focus on working on the false fronts. Before pushing the cabinet fully into its final place, I added a small section of dust hose to the blue coupler. This will be connected to the table saw dust port. It fit perfectly around the dust bucket, which made me really satisfied. I could remove the clamps holding the cast iron top and let it rest over the new cabinet. I inserted the drawers and drill large holes into the central door to install the hinges. I used my trusty acrylic jig to drill the screw holes for the hinge plates and snap the door in place. This time I wanted to try something different and not use the fancy push-to-open hardware that I typically install on my furniture projects. I still didn't want handles because my legs tend to hit protruding objects while passing by. I got a router bit that cuts this profile meant to work as a drawer pole. It took several passes to get to the desired depth. By the way, the new dust collection accessories are already in action. As you can see, there's no dust at all. Yay! The drawer that will store the routers has a fairly tall false front. I reinforced the components connection and stability with two triangular supports. The cabinet is complete. Let's move into the tabletop adaptations. I have been dealing with a wide miter slot so far, but I prefer this type of T-tracks because it's easier to clamp accessories using T-bolts. Using the proper table saw blade, I cut two sections of aluminum T-track. I wanted to avoid drilling into the cast iron to attach bolts. Glue can be very messy and make it a pain to remove in the future, so I came up with this idea. To fix the T-track into the miter slots, I use tiny set screws that will allow the T-track to slide, but not come up when the fence and jigs are clamped. I drill holes into the aluminum T-tracks and then created threads to receive the 3M set screws. The black screws are tiny, but perfectly fine for this clamping purpose. Although to lock the tracks in place, my idea was to unscrew the last two until they got snug on the slot width. But the ones I got were too short. I went to my local hardware store the next day and bought some longer ones. In the meantime, I cut a few strips of grey MDF to fill in some portions of the miter slots that seem useless to me and only serve to build up dust. I started sliding those, but quickly realized I needed a relief rabbit on each end for the T-track to slide past. I got the longer set screws the next day and continued the installation.
I turn them all the way in to be able to slide the T-Tracks and then back them out slightly until they were catching the minor slot walls. I then hammer the T-Track a few millimeters. It is pretty secure. I finished sliding the remaining bits of filling that were pressure fitted. I can reattach the table border and move into adapting the fence. This is a Rockler Promax router table fence. The clamping slots it comes with don't align with the tabletop tracks, so I'll drill a hole in each side to solve the issue. It was super easy to do. I can install the micro adjuster locking knob and slide the T-bolts into my new T-tracks to test it out. I'm happy to see that the concept worked out nicely. The fence has a micro adjuster and two bars that can be repositioned for when you need to joint the edge of a board when you don't have a jointer. I use these foam blocks with holes to organize my router bits inside the tiny drawers. The long drawers are so helpful. I can't believe I can finally enjoy using my router table and have all its accessories organized and dust free. And I love the Tokik extra storage. Most of the time the hose will be connected to this front port that goes to the table saw. When I want to use the router table, I switch it to the side port and add the smaller hose to suck dust from the fence. This way, the floor hose is out of my way for both situations. When routing grooves and dados, the dust is projected towards the outfit area and Rockler has an interesting product to collect that massive amount of dust. I made an adapter to clamp their dado dust shoe to my table saw rail, but if you have a wooden tabletop, it's as simple as screwing the dust shoe to the underside of the top. The fence hose can be connected to the dust chute and the dust will be collected from there. Now let's take a look at the middle cubby. The dust bucket opens nicely. I have more space to store jigs and accessories below it. The fence is easy to move around and the T-Track idea worked perfectly. The Rockler Pro Lift has super convenient insert rings that come in several sizes. They snap into place flush with the plate. Now I don't need to deal with screws anymore when changing the bits. It has a quick gear mechanism to raise and lower the bits rapidly and a precision one to make smaller adjustments. I kept my original router, which is a 110 volt machine, that's why I have a power converter. The speed dial and the safety switch were attached conveniently to the cabinet's right side and this build is complete. A big shout out to Rockler Woodworking Hardware for supporting this project as well as to all my Patreon members. If you want to support my work too, head over to patreon.com slash gethandsdurry or visit my online shop and grab a t-shirt for yourself or a gift for a friend. Thanks everyone for watching and go get your hands dirty. Até já.